Hey, welcome back to another episode on automating your home with Home Assistant and Node-RED. Like I said last video, um, over the next couple weeks slash months, what I'm going to be doing is creating a series of smaller videos that focus on adding specific pieces of hardware into your Home Assistant slash Node-RED uh, automation server. Um, what we're going to be adding this week, or this video, is the Google Home. Uh, the Google Home is a really popular um, smart speaker that a lot of people have in their homes. It's capable in its own right of doing, you know, some some fairly decent uh, home automation and some even some multi-hardware flows where you say something like turn off all the lights in the living room and even if you have Philips Hue or Lutron Caseta, it'll handle all those lights, which is which is kind of nice. But it is still a little limited uh, when compared to systems like Node Red or the the type of home automation system we're building that has, you know. A lot more tweakability, a lot more customization than what you get out of the box with a consumer product like Google Home. But anyway, um, to get started, we're going to be installing another piece of software into our home automation system, and that is an MQTT broker. So I'm not going to get too far into MQTT. There's a lot of really good videos that explain how it works and what it does. But basically, it's a bulletin board that we can post messages to that our IoT hardware or other devices can read from. And that's advantageous for a couple of reasons. It means we can have an unlimited amount of clients uh, that can read from that bulletin board and we can segregate it off into separate smaller bulletin boards called topics. So, you know, you have a topic, for instance, called living room and all your living room hardware is listening to that topic. And you might have another bulletin board called lights where where all your lights in your whole house are listening to that topic including the ones in your living room so it's it's good for it's good for organization it's good for segregation of duties and not only on the client side but we can have many uh, publishers post on the bulletin board we can have you know controls coming in over the internet from from say google home and ifttt or we can have um, home assistant uh, publishing messages to uh, MQTT based on sun state or based on whether or not lights are on or off or things like that. So it's, it's just a really good platform for IoT and that was kind of its uh, intention, uh, what it was built for. So, and it does a really good job. So anyway, let's get started with that. It's a really simple install to install Mosquito. We're just going to use our package manager and do a sudo pacman sign sy so yeah, Mosquito is the MQTT broker we're going to be using. Now, I know that Home Assistant does have one built in. I, actually, I don't know that for sure. I think it does. I've, I've heard that it does. But uh, just out of preference, uh, we're going to be using Mosquito because it seems to be what most people use, and it's got a lot of support and a really, really good community. So anyway, that's already installed. Let's just enable it to start at boot, and we will start it. So... So it is started. Uh, now we will go connect our Home Assistant instance to Mosquito. And it's a really simple, uh, that's really simple to do. We'll just go into the uh, CD Home Assistant and we'll do a configuration.yaml. And down at the bottom of configuration.yaml, we'll add a section for MQTT. We'll go right below that hue entry there and we'll say MQTT and space and double space uh, for the indentation on YAML and we'll say broker 192.16 actually you know what since it's on the same exact machine that uh, home assistant is on we can actually just use our loopback IP which is a really fast resolving IP that just to refer to oneself so we'll do 127 27.0.0.1 and that will loop directly back into our MQTT broker on the same machine. So we don't need to save or set a, a port or anything like that because our Mosquito instance is using the default MQTT port. We just need to restart Home Assistant so that it pulls that config. Okay, so Home Assistant restarted. Uh, we can just do a quick look at the journal entry in um, the systemd unit for Mosquito to see that we have a connection from Home Assistant. So sudo uh, 
And there we go. We can see in the corner here that, sorry, I'll spread this out so you can see. Uh, we'll see, you can see here that uh, just a couple seconds ago, we had a new connection from 127001 and a new client connected. So that's actually Home Assistant connecting to the Mosquito instance. And it looks like everything is good. So we'll close that up. For the next part, if you remember in the last video, I advised that you go ahead and make your Home Assistant instance available from the internet. And that's going to be critical for the for the next step to get to allow Google Home to talk to Home Assistant. We need to have the the ability for web services to talk in from the net. So, however you do that, whether it be with just your your regular IP if it's static enough, your well sorry your external IP if it's static enough, or some kind of dynamic DNS service like Duck DNS or your conventional DNS services, that's completely up to you. Personally, I use a dynamic DNS service called No IP, and I've got my own domain uh, datafobe.com which we're going to be using to talk back into Home Assistant. So let's just go and verify that our Home Assistant instance is available from the internet. And I've called it has.datafobe.com and sure enough it's there with its insecure password that I will be changing before posting the videos. Uh, yeah, so obviously it's available from the net. Uh, notice it's HTTPS as well. Um, I use Let's Encrypt to handle the SSL side of things on this, and obviously that's highly encouraged. Anytime you have web services exposed to the net, use SSL. So again, however you chose to do it is fine. As long as it's available from the internet, that's all that really matters. So in order to get Google Home, or Google Assistant more specifically, to be able to communicate with Home Assistant or to communicate with Node-RED or however, whatever we want to do, is we need to use a service called IFTTT. Uh, there might be another way to do this using uh, the Google developers or the Google code uh, stream, but the, the best way for most people and the way that works best for most people is going to be IFTTT. Now, a lot of people have heard of IFTTT. It's a web service very popular in the IoT community it allows you to create actions based on events from cloud services and those are called in IFTTT language they're called this is and that's so if this occurs if if a, if a specific series of events happens in a web service or a cloud service then do that which is you know anything you want it to do whether it be send you an email send you an SMS uh, call a web service go to a website URL etc cetera, etc cetera. that all that all happens in IFTTT so we're going to be using IFTTT to take input from our Google Assistant and then to call our Home Assistant instance uh, with some very specific uh, JSON data after it gets that after it gets that uh, that Google Assistant trigger uh, condition met so we'll go to IFTTT.com and if you haven't create an account here already uh, please do it with your Google account it's best to do it with a Google account so that the whole Google Assistant and whatever uh, is in sync in terms of IFTTT knows what Google Assistant you're using on your phone or on your Google Home device so I've already signed in and I've already got a couple applets here but we're gonna create a new applet and once it loads Maybe I didn't click it. Okay. One, one we're going to do here is we're going to create a new this condition. And that this condition is going to be Google Assistant. And we're going to use the simple phrase. And the phrase I want to say is test node red. And you can phrase it a different way too. It'll gives you, it actually gives you three ways you can phrase the keyword to to fire this trigger and we'll say test home assistant and we don't need a third way that's and we don't need that a third way this is already good enough in response to the uh, initial command we can have Google home reply to us and say a certain thing so let's just have it say sure boss put a comma in there okay and we'll create that as a trigger so now our this is met with that Google Home trigger. Now we need to add a that. And the that is going to be webhook call. So if you just search the word web, you'll see webhooks come up. 
And this is where we actually reach back to our Home Assistant instance. We're going to make a web request. And the URL we're going to use is right here. HTTPS has.datafobe.com. And obviously this is going to be your URL that you use, not mine. Slash API slash services MQTT and then publish and then a query string with our password in it. So it's going to be API underscore password equals password. Obviously your password will be different, hopefully more secure. And again, your domain will be different as well. The method we're going to be using is post. The content type is going to be JSON. And the content message we're going to use is this. I'm going to paste that in the body. So it's basically dropping a payload message of one to a topic. Now this copy and paste was from another one that I did earlier, but the topic we're going to use is test YouTube, since this is a YouTube video for the test. And it's going to have the property retain equals true. I'll post uh, all these in the comments or in the, uh, the video description so that you guys can, can see the example and, uh, and when you go to create your own action. So anyway, we can see here that when I say test node red, it makes a web request and we'll click finish to save that. Perfect. Now let's go connect our node red instance to Mosquito so that we actually have someone to receive these messages. Now, of course, I guess that was the bad verbiage. Home Assistant is going to receive these messages. It's going to package them up and post them using its published service to MQTT. At the other end of MQTT is how Node Red is going to be brought into the loop. It's going to be listening on that same topic for these triggers or for these topics to be published to, and then flows are going to fire off from there. So, really, Home Assistant is acting as the gatekeeper to our home automation system. It's, it's so we don't have to expose multiple services to the internet. Home Assistant is, is the single point of contact uh, with its security to, um, to allow external commands or external triggers to be accepted by our internal home automation network home or home automation system. So let's go to node red. And there we are. So username admin. Okay. So we're in node red. Um, we're going to start by adding an MQTT node from the input area and we're going to drop it on the pane. Um, you don't need to add this as a custom palette or anything like that. MQTT is also designed by IBM. So these nodes come with node red and are inherent to node red. But we do need to configure it. So let's double click on that. We're going to add a new MQTT broker. The broker is obviously going to be on the same machine as Node Red, so we'll call it localhost. Uh, default port works. We don't need to add a client ID and we don't need to add any other type of security because we haven't set any up yet. So we'll add that as the server. The topic we're listening to again is test slash YouTube. QS of 2 is fine and we'll say done to that. So Here's this node that's listening to the MQTT, um, the MQTT bulletin board topic of test YouTube, which is the same one that node uh, that um, Home Assistant is going to publish to when it gets that trigger from IFTTT. So let's get rid of this payload or get the debug node. We're going to add another debug node so we can see any messages that get passed come in. So we'll click deploy. And now we're live. Uh, you can see the connected logo. It's actually listening to that MQTT topic. And anything that comes in will be passed to the message uh, debug node here. So uh, what was that thing I had to say again? Oh yeah, uh, test home assistant. Okay, Google. Test home assistant. Sure, Bob. There we go. So just like we defined in IFTTT, it said the response that we gave it and it also delivered that payload message of one. So perfect, everything seems to work end to end. Um, obviously you can see the potential for this kind of, of control scheme uh, where you have various specific commands that can fire off flows. 
a little more complex than the standard Google Home library. I'm not going to go any further than this right now, uh, but in the next video I'll be adding some more uh, very popular hardware. It'll be uh, Sonos speakers. And maybe at the end of that video we can leverage uh, what we learned today or what we added today uh, along with the Sonos speakers to create some uh, music automation driven by the Google Home. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching, um, and I will see you shortly. Bye-bye.